So in earlier lessons, we learned that the total linear momentum of a system of masses or a bunch of objects does not change if there's no net external force acting on the system. And in, in more technical terms, we say that the linear momentum is conserved. But what really happens to the kinetic energy of the system? It must either be going up or going down. So in physics, we say that if the total kinetic energy does not change before and after the collision, the collision is elastic in nature. But the truth is that this really happens in real life. So if two cars collide, the total kinetic energy does not remain constant before and after the collision. In fact, a lot gets dissipated in heat and sound post the collision. Or let's take the example of a bat hitting a ball. We can clearly hear the sound of a knock when a bat hits a ball, which essentially means that some kinetic energy has got converted into sound energy. In fact, some might have even got converted into heat. So such collisions where kinetic energy is not preserved are called inelastic. Then there's also a term that is called completely inelastic collision, which essentially involves two or more bodies sticking together and moving as one mass after the collision. And in such cases, the loss of kinetic energy is maximum. However, there can be some collisions which come kind of close to being elastic or kinetic energy is almost conserved. So one example that comes to mind is a billiards cue ball hitting another ball. Although there is some sound produced, but careful calculations have found that the velocity of the interacting balls changes in a way that the kinetic energy before and after the collision is quite close. So let's get on with the understanding of this topic in more mathematical terms. So let us say you have two masses M1 and M2 and M1 is moving with the velocity V1 initial and mass M2 is moving with the velocity V2 initial. And then let's say M1 goes and bumps into mass M2 and the velocities change. So V1 initial becomes V1 final and V2 initial becomes V2 final. And let us say this is an inelastic collision. So the law of conservation of linear momentum says that P1 initial or the momentum of mass 1 before the collision plus the momentum of mass 2 before the collision should equal to the momentum of mass 1 after the collision and let's call it P1 final plus P2 final. And you got to remember these are vector quantities. But if you're considering motion in one dimension, we can drop these vector signs and expand this equation as m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial should equal m1 v1 final plus m2 v2 final. And this equation is nothing but the law of conservation of linear momentum for masses which are interacting. Now let us say this was a completely inelastic collision which essentially means that mass M1 crashed into M2 and then the two masses kind of stuck together and moved ahead together, in which case the combined mass M1 and M2 would have a common velocity and let's call it capital V. So we can write the above equation like this, M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial should equal to the common velocity V into M1 plus M2. And let us say if mass M2 was stationary before the collision, V2 becomes zero, common velocity becomes M1 upon M1 plus M2 times V1 initial. So what you'll notice is that the final velocity V has to be always less than the velocity of mass M1 before the collision because the ratio M1 upon M1 plus M2 is always less than one. Now let's go ahead and see what happens to the velocity of the center of mass of these two masses. So we've learned in the earlier lessons that the linear momentum of a system of masses can be represented as a product of the sum of the masses multiplied by the velocity of the center of mass. Or we can write P is equal to M into V center of mass. And M here is nothing but M1 plus M2. And V center of mass is the velocity of center of mass of these two masses. Now, the law of conservation of linear momentum also says that P should equal P1 initial plus P2 
2 initial or the sum of the linear momentum of mass m1 and mass m2. And if this is the case, we can equate this with m1 plus m2 into v center of mass. And this equation gives the value of v center of mass as equal to p1 initial plus p2 initial divided by m1 m1 plus m2. And what you would observe is that p1 initial plus p2 initial is a constant and m1 plus m2 is also a constant and therefore v center of mass is also a constant which essentially means that the velocity of center of mass before the collision and after the collision remains the same. It does not change.